This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Sometimes we get to wandering way far away from the will of God for our lives. And brokenness can be used as a tool to bring you back into his loving arms. I don't know about you, but, you know, in life, sometimes you, you, you know, you take a detour away from the plan and the purpose of God for your life. And in the middle of that, you may experience some brokenness. That's just God saying, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting you back on the path. You're wandering right now. There is still a will for your life. There is still a plan for your life. There is still an anointing that I've given you for your life. And so I'm going to use brokenness, although I may not send it, but I will use it to bring you back into my loving arms. So there's a beauty of brokenness because of where you end up. have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms 147. I'm going to use two scriptures for our, our text, and I want to talk to you about a serious subject. It's, you know, I go back and forth on whether or not I was ready to present this, and, and I believe that this is, this is time. Today I'm going to talk to you about brokenness. And I'm going to talk to you about how to overcome brokenness because I don't think people understand that a lot of things that we do in our life, it may be a result of uh, unresolved brokenness in your life. This conference this week has, has, has been about worth, value, uh, the search for significance. And you have to understand that if God values you, he says you're the apple of his eye, if God values you, you're going to have to learn how to value yourself. You know, you're talking about loving somebody, it's going to be you understanding how to love yourself. And so it's important for you to value what God values. God values you, and it's important for you to not let somebody devalue you because God values you. You are worth uh, everything to the kingdom of God, and God put you here, you have a purpose, you have a plan, you have a job, you have things that you're supposed to do. But one of the things that I want you to see is if you can understand this issue of brokenness, brokenness is a root that will, uh, will, will give birth to fruit. And sometimes that fruit in our character and fruit in our life, sometimes we say, well, that's just how I am. And really it's not. It's just the fruit of brokenness developing and growing more and more in your life. And I want to show you how to identify those areas, and then if we have time, show you how to break free from it so that you can achieve everything that God has purposed for your life. In Psalms 147, verse 3, and then we're going to go to Psalms 34. Psalms 147, verse 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. And then if you go to Psalms 34, Psalms 34, verse 17 through 19, and in verse 17 he says, 
the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Verse 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Praise God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So if you're, if you're born again and you're the righteousness of God, you should not be surprised. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth you from all of them. Now, let's begin. What is brokenness? How would we define brokenness? Brokenness is the flawed condition of humanity that creates a tendency for people to hurt themselves and to hurt others. Let me say that again. Brokenness is the flawed condition of humanity that creates a tendency for people to hurt themselves and to hurt others. You see, one of the facts of being human is that we don't always get things right. One of the, the, the truths of being a human being is that we mess up. And if you begin to understand that, you know, you don't beat yourself up. This is something that, that being a human, it happens because of your humanity. Look at Romans chapter 3 and 10. And, and, and sometimes Christians don't think that this, this is something that'll happen to them because you're Christians and, you, and you, know, you know God. Well, I mean, I just read you two scriptures where God is committed to the brokenhearted, uh, where God has made a decision to be there for those who are broken. So even those who are of Jesus Christ will experience times of brokenness. David experienced a time of brokenness. And so it's something that we got to talk about because we, we can't just kind of blow it away and act like, well, this is not going to happen to me because I pray and I fast and all that stuff is good. But brokenness is a reality. And uh, hopefully I'll get to, to showing you a graceful brokenness, how God uses it to really bring you to a place of accomplishing his will for your life. Romans 3 and 10 says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Well, that's something. If it were not for Jesus Christ, there is none righteous. If it were not for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't even be the righteousness of God right now. We're righteous because of his righteousness, not because of ours. So he says, there's not one righteous, no, not one. So true brokenness is a tool by which God brings his his work, he, he brings his, his, his sheep that are wandering back into his, live, his loving arms. Now, listen to that. Uh, it's a tool that God can use to bring his wandering sheep back into his loving arms. Sometimes we get to wandering way far away from the will of God for our lives, and brokenness can be used as a tool to bring you back into his loving arms. I don't know about you, but, you know, in life, sometimes you, you, you know, you take a detour away from the plan and the purpose of God for your life. And in the middle of that, you may experience some brokenness. That's just God saying, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting you back on the path. You're wandering right now. There is still a will for your life. There is still a plan for your life. There is still an anointing that I've given you for your life. And so I'm going to use brokenness, although I may not send it, but I will use it to bring you back into my loving arms. So there's a beauty of brokenness because of where you end up. And maybe it was rough, and maybe it hurt, and maybe it was painful, maybe somebody else was hurt and it was painful, but at the end of the day, I want you to trust that God can even use your brokenness to bring you back into the loving arms of the Heavenly Father. And so, let's look at Romans chapter 7 and verse 15. And, you know, I'm, I'm trying to start off just really chilled and, and not get too excited to, before you understand where we're going. Romans 7, 15 says, For that, this is Paul talking, For that which I do I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Did you catch what happens here? Paul says that he's doing the things 
that he knew he wasn't supposed to do. Paul is saying that Paul wanted to do what was right, but he didn't. He still did the thing he hated. He wanted to do what was right, but he didn't. He still did the thing he hated. Some of you can relate to that, that you're wanting to do right, but you're ending up still doing the thing you hate it. You don't even like it. You know the danger of it. You know what happens. And so brokenness in your life, you have to understand that has never been resolved. Brokenness in your life that has never been dealt with, you've never resolved it, may be infiltrating your life and it may be infiltrating your relationships. Brokenness in your life that's unresolved, brokenness in your life that you've not dealt with may somehow be infiltrating your life. It may somehow be infiltrating your relationships. Now, let me say this. You will not be able to make progress above the level of your unresolved brokenness. You will not be able to be successful above the level of your unresolved brokenness. And so it's important right now. It's a key thing that if we can begin to deal with it, first of all, if we can start recognizing it and then we start dealing with it, then we can locate where it's come into our lives. And so that's what I want to deal with this morning. So what is it about your character? What is it about your life that may be a result of brokenness? What is it about how you carry yourself that may be a result of brokenness? What is it about, you know, you know people may say that, you know, you're, you're a complainer or they may say that you're selfish and, and all of those things, it's, it's a fruit of brokenness. And so uh, could it be true that how you carry yourselves uh, may be a result of your brokenness? You know, sometimes we like to put the blame on other things and, and blaming people for things may be a result of your brokenness. So I'm going to cover several things, several fruits of brokenness, if you will. And I want you to listen to them to at least identify those fruits of brokenness so you can leave from here saying, ah, yeah, that's me. That's me. I need to resolve that. And so the first fruit of brokenness is something called defensiveness. If you are a defensive person, it's probably something that has infiltrated your, your life. It's something that has uh, become a part and infiltrated your relationships. Defensiveness. Look at your life and see if you are defensive. You know, it, this is so true. Acceptance is the first step to recovery. Uh, until you come to the point of accepting, okay, that's my issue. Until you come to the point of accepting, okay, I have that in my life. Acceptance is the first step to recovery. So if we can't admit that we've messed up, we're going to never be able to change for the better. If we just kind of keep covering up because, oh, it makes me feel bad or it makes me feel sad, then you're never going to change for the better. So we've got to admit, hey, I messed up. I, I admit I'm defensive, okay? And then you take ownership of the tension rather than getting defensive and blaming everyone and everything else instead. By taking ownership of it, by accepting it, then you're going to be in a place where you can really overcome this area of being defensive. But you're defensive, why? Because of, of an area of broken in your, brokenness in your life. Uh, you know, the thing about being broken is that God already knows how to put you back together again. You're not destroyed. If something is destroyed, you can't put it back together again. But if you're broken, you can be put back together again. And God is committed to putting broken people back together again. But if you don't accept responsibility for being defensive and saying, well, you know, I am the, I'm a person that's defensive because of some brokenness in my life. So examine those areas of brokenness in your life and ask yourself, has that produced me being a defensive person in my life? That's number one. Number two, you know, sometimes in relationships, you give people the quiet treatment. Sometimes in a relationship, you put up that stone wall. What is it that causes you to give people the quiet treatment. You know, if someone has indeed wronged you, talking to them about it is the best first step. Somebody's done something to you, it, it, it's, it's not going around and giving them the quiet treatment and 
putting up a wall and I'm just not going to say anything. That's not how you do it. The very best first step is to talk about it and, and to get it out in, in the opening. And so giving someone the cold shoulder, it just, it just makes the situation worse. And if you begin to look at people, and you may know somebody that, you know, they, 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 they give the quiet treatment. Every time something happens in their life, they, they, they get quiet. I'm not going to say anything to anybody. And sometimes you're actually thinking that's resolving it. No, it's not. The very best first step you can do is learn how to confront the situation, learn how to talk about the situation. Now, I use the word confrontation. Confrontation doesn't have to be a negative word. Confrontation, is, 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 it'll bring about growth for the person who is doing the confronting and the person who's being confronted. But sometimes, man, we think somehow that something beneficial comes out of being quiet, that something beneficial happens after, you know, as a result of stonewalling. I'll say it once, I'll say it again. If someone has indeed wronged you, talking to them about it is the best first step. Somebody says, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know if I want to do something like that. Well, there's an area of brokenness that has produced this fruit in your life. Let's look at the next one. Criticism. Criticism is a fruit of brokenness. You know, one of the ways people try to pry attention away from their mistakes is to point out the faults of other people. And so you have to ask yourself, why am I so critical? Why am I always find myself criticizing other people? Well, maybe you're trying to, you know, move the attention away from your mistakes and point out the faults of somebody else. I mean, we all know people who do that. And if, if you're doing that, the thing I would do is like, what, what is it in my life that's happened where I feel so bad about, you know, the things that I've done, I feel so bad about my mistakes that the answer to it is let me just see if I can, you know, get some, look at what somebody else is doing and make them look bad. A broken spirit, a, a broken heart is the reason why that happens. You're going to find out today that a, that a, lot, of, the, a lot of conduct that, that people display if they will take the time to deal with their brokenness, all of these things will go away as well. Let's look at this. Number four, contempt. What do I mean when I use the word contempt? It's a state of being mean, despised, disgraced, dishonored. You see, disregarding someone gives the impression that even if they did do what was right in your eyes, it still wouldn't be enough. Think about that. that that's bondage. You know, I, 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 even if I did do something right, it still wouldn't be enough. Comments in a loving tone will always go a lot further than anything said in rudeness and sarcasm. Why is it that you can find yourself continuing to be sarcastic and rude to other people? What is it that causes you to be a mean person? There's brokenness in your life. You're mean to everybody that comes around you because maybe in a relationship it didn't work out or maybe somebody said something that really uh, made you feel bad about you know, uh, who you are and, and, and insignificant. Uh, brokenness will be the reason why you can carry on this kind of thing, and, and you're just mean, you're rude, you're sarcastic. And, 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 and here's another thing. Somebody says, well, that's just me, and I'm not going to change for anybody. No, that's not you. That's the fruit of brokenness. That's the broken you. That's not you. And, and sometimes when, when people make excuses, for not wanting to change, they're just, that's just their reason for not wanting to do it. And so, hopefully just by identifying these things that you can just kind of really see it, oh, wow, I didn't, I, I've never related that to my brokenness, that uh, it'll cause you to want to just do something about it. Number five, and, and I realize I'm running out of time, um, how, negative assumptions. We, we, we've probably done that, all of us, negative assumptions. You know, not, not everyone has earned perfect trust. That's true. But most of us also don't deserve to have the motives questioned. Uh, I mean, every time you look around, you're questioning my motives. I, I, I have not earned perfect, per, perfect trust, but do I deserve to have, every time I do something, have it to be questioned? Uh, negative assumptions. Why, why are you always having negative assumptions about everybody? Why, why is it so important to you to, 
you know, uh, the fact that you know you, 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 can't, you can't earn perfect trust, but I'm just not willing to deal with it all at all because I just, I don't know, I just, I just don't, uh, I just don't, I don't trust you. That's what I've heard people say that, I just don't trust you. Well, it's going to be real hard for you to have a relationship with people because nobody's going to want to be around somebody that they feel, you know, always going to question their motives. And every time you look around, well, I'm questioning your motive, I'm questioning your motive. That's a negative assumption. And if you do not deal with that, that makes it very difficult for you to have relationship with people. Relationships are supposed to bless you. They're supposed to help you to get across certain things. There's something about the power of relationship that God wants to happen in a person's life. And when you have been devalued, when you have been uh, hurt, when you have been uh, betrayed, all of that is a part of brokenness, then you're probably going to be a person that has a bunch of negative assumptions. Now, am I saying to just trust everybody? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying maybe this is a fruit of brokenness. Let's look at the next one. Invalidating opinions. Invalidating opinions. Now, this person is the only one who is ever allowed to be right. You ever met somebody like that? He's the only one that's ever allowed to be right. Anyone else who disagrees with them, you're stupid and you're foolish. You know, what is it that makes you think that you're the only one that can be right? Can't nobody, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know if you've ever been around, it, that's frustrating being around somebody who thinks I, I'm, I'm the only one that's right and, they know it, and, and if you don't agree with me, you stupid. And you, I know you want to say your mama, but you can't do that because, you know, that's probably brokenness too. But <laughs> you've got to make sure that in, in relationships, you can't do that. You, you, you're, you're, you're not perfect. How do, what is it that causes you to think you're the only one that's right? Brokenness. That's what causes you. See, you may be checking people out and you're trying to wonder, you know, whether they're a bad person or not. It, I'm telling you, there's a root to what you see. There's a root to what you experience. And there's so many people that are trying to gain success with unresolved brokenness. So many people who have wounds that they would rather cover up and produce a false identity than to uncover and to deal and to get and to heal that wound, and then those characteristics won't be there. But this is how serious this is. And I thought, you know what? It, maybe if I just give a list of things that people need to do, it'll get their attention to say, dude, I, I, I need to deal with these broken areas of my life. A broken person that was broken at seven, and now you're, 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 you're 25, you are allowing the seven-year-old to try to live, live, that, live in that body of a 25-year-old because it's, it's not been resolved. Let's, let's move to the next one, escalating vengeance. Escalating vengeance, what does that mean? There isn't much satisfaction in the revenge business. And retaliating after a fight is never the right way to go. So it might feel natural to lash out at things that have hurt us or made us angry, but it's not how God wants things to be. So somebody's done something to you. Somebody said something about you. Somebody dishonored you and disgraced you in some kind of way and escalating vengeance and trying to get revenge and trying to retaliate afterwards, dude, that's not the thing to do. And, and we live in a generation where people are like so broken that they, they'll, they'll do all kinds of maybe violent things because I'm not going to let you do that to me and get away with it. I'm going to get you back. What happens when you are around a society of a bunch of broken people and they are escalating vengeance? All they're doing is thinking about, how am I going to get you back? And somehow, uh, you never really feel satisfied when you do something like that. You think you will, but you're not. It really takes a bigger person to know that somebody has wronged me, and I, I can just forgive them, and I can just walk away, and I'm not going to retaliate. I just trust God, and I'm not going to, you know, 
you know, rent space in my mind where you're concerned, I'm gonna go on. Peace is my most valuable asset. I'm not gonna spend it on your drama. God promised to deliver us from unresolved brokenness and make us whole again. Creflo Dollar dives deep into this topic that affects all believers and discloses relevant truths to help you overcome brokenness. Today's offer is a six-message series, How to Heal from Brokenness, and is available today for a love gift of $35 U.S. dollars or more. If he started the good work, he's going to finish the good work. Now, I don't know where you are. I don't, what, no, I don't know what ditch you've fallen into. I don't know what philosophy you've been buying lately. But if God started the work, he will finish the work. He will use every crazy thing in your life to make sure that the work is finished. Why? Because he is faithful. As an added bonus, we have combined the How to Heal from Brokenness series with the powerful CD, Heart of Nations. This combo can be yours for a love gift of 45 US dollars or more. Don't miss this opportunity to order yours today. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Holy Spirit's not sitting, sitting around reminding you of what you did in the past. That's condemnation. He's not going to do that. If any man is in Christ, he is a new species of being. You know why? Because of the image of Christ. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. By the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.